Hello, yeah. Samar. Hello. Samar Bilbao Leons, Director General of the World Nuclear Association. So glad we're finally having a cup of tea. Yes. In the front of what? To it buy the gorgeous, United Arab Emirates. Huh? Gorgeous. Uh, hopefully, we will be broadcasting it in our social media in a couple of weeks' time. But today, today, mm -hmm. the Global Energy Association published a very interesting poll conducted in the United States. Uh, two thirds of Americans already consider nuclear energy green. Mm -hmm. Are we over? Well, we're getting there, but but uh, we are we still have a lot of work to do. Huh? I think that the last couple of years have been a game changer, really. I think that a lot of people have started to scratch their chin, thinking, hmm, maybe nuclear is not as bad as they had told me. But um, but we still have a lot of work to do. In Germany. Well, <laughs> in Ger but see, you know that recent polls in Germany actually had that uh, many, I, I forgot exactly the number, but many Germans, they would actually favor not to shut down the existing nuclear power plants. Anyway, you have Austria in Europe, where they had a referendum banning mm -hmm. nuclear energy. You have Germany, where, in my personal view, which I'm not going to impose on anyone, mm -hmm. they take, took a strange decision as far as nuclear energy is concerned. I think it was a little rash. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, and now by phasing out nuclear without having enough windmills, they're having problems. But then you have this important faction in Europe, mm -hmm. in the European Union, yep. plus the UK, and plus Russia on the other side, which mm. are pro-nuclear. Absolutely, absolutely. What does a European seal of approval uh, on nuclear energy would mean for the rest of the world? I think that's going to be very important. I think that uh, everybody uh, looks at Europe and the United States as, well, the, the thing to do. So I think that if nuclear energy starts to bring a stronger role in Europe, particularly we are seeing already the Netherlands, we are seeing of course France, well, but, but... And Britain, and Britain, uh, there's and a renaissance in Britain. Oh, okay, but the, the UK is not really Europe, right? A European <laughs> Union, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I hear you, I hear you. No, but uh, clearly, no, the, the role of the UK is very important. But uh, I think it's so important to see all those different uh, Eastern European, Central and Eastern European countries. They are incredibly strong. They have a lot of exciting projects. Um, and I think that that is going to be something that many countries around the world are paying attention to. Do you think that if people in Asia, Africa, the Middle East, Latin America see Europe uh, carrying on? They, they would say, they okay, will, why they, don't we why do the don't same? Why don't we do this? Exactly, exactly. And, and I think that. Uh, that is absolutely true. I, I think that um, countries that do not have nuclear currently, they always look at the countries that do have it. It's like, oh, are they, are they continuing it or are they phasing out? So this is why Germany was always the poster child of what, what oh, if Germany phases out nuclear, we all should. Well, right now, nuclear is an out, uh, Germany is an outlier. Everybody else is moving forward. We are talking on the fringes of a conference organized by Rosatom, the Russian nuclear monopoly, in the United Emirates, the United Arab Emirates, presenting its uh, SMRs, mm -hmm. small modular reactors. Yeah, uh, essentially speaking, to put things uh, simply, mm -hmm. countries which have wanted to build big nuclear power plants have mm -hmm. already done so. So mm -hmm. we've come to a stage where small modular reactors will play its role. Please explain in simple terms to the viewers out there mm -hmm. what are we talking about here. Yes, so the, the advantages of the small modular reactors is exactly that. They are small in size, but they are also designed to be modular, to be, to be factory fabricated, and the process of building them is going to be incredibly quick. So the actual civil work is very small, is basically bringing the reactor and putting it, putting it in, the, in the final location. So this is going to be incredibly good if, because it's going to be much more affordable. Uh, it is a much smaller investment. It can be done faster. And the, the infrastructure that you need in order to launch these reactors is going to be much smaller. So I think that countries that they were really not able to buy a large reactor, it's a large investment, large infrastructure, they actually look at these smaller reactors as an opportunity. Russia has already done a lot of things like that. Like there's this floating platform, Academician mm -hmm. Lomonosov. Yes, yes, yes. Which was uh, produced in the western part of the country, taken to the far north in the easternmost part of Russia yes. and it mm -hmm. supplies electricity and heat. 
so th this is th this is how it would work in other parts of the world too. Exactly. I mean, there are, and this is part of the beauty also of SMRs. There is so many different models. So you have different uh, coolants, different different system arrangements. So the Russian model, where you have this floating reactor that you essentially can take it. Uh, whenever okay. you need it. So a coast uh, of an African country exactly. with a deficit of electricity. Exactly. You can bring it wherever you, you want. You anchor it and it produces electricity which goes ashore. And heat, which I think is very important. Yeah. Huh? I mean, and this is something that only nuclear can do. As far as these low carbon energy sources, nuclear energy is the only one that can produce the electricity and the heat. Because remember, uh, we need heat for heating and cooling. We need heat for many industrial processes. So, so it is very important to have both. So I think that, that, is, that is a great opportunity that that is bringing. I'm sure that some people are looking at us now, mm -hmm. thinking, aren't they crazy? They right. are in the Persian Gulf, in the Arabian Gulf, as the Arabs mm -hmm. call it, in the United Arab Emirates, with plenty of oil and gas. Right. Why build nuclear stations in places like that? Well, I think that uh, the world is moving towards uh, more low carbon energy sources, number one. I think that climate change, we all have realized that that is kind of happening and we need to do our best to, to minimize its effects. So, I mean, even already in the Gulf states, nuclear is a thing. I, I, you know that here in the United Arab Emirates, they're building a nuclear They already plant. have two units operating and they, they have two more that will be operating. One will be this year and the next one next year. So and then with all the controversy surrounding the other part of their nuclear program, the Iranians are building, have built a nuclear yes, power plant yes, as well yes, on the other yes, side yes, of the yes. Gulf. Exactly, exactly. No, I, I think that, um, you know, we have seen this in Europe, we have seen this in, in many countries right now. You cannot have only one source of energy. We need to have a diversified, mm -hmm. diversified energy mix as low carbon as possible. It's not always going to be easy to have it 100% zero carbon, but as low carbon as possible. And it's going to very much depend of the natural endowments of each country. So so countries with, with oil and gas perhaps will be able to rely more on this, and countries with no oil and gas, but maybe a lot of hydro, they will be able to use hydro, etc., etc. Tell me some, give me some figures, please. Uh, as far as the carbon emissions are concerned, mm -hmm. let us compare nuclear, solar, wind and traditional oil and gas. Mm -hmm. Well, oil and gas, obviously, when you burn it, there's CO2. Exactly. Okay, let's compare what's called the alternative energy, solar, wind, nuclear. Uh, which of the three is uh, the cleanest? The cleanest. Okay, so this is a tricky question. It is, I know. <laughs> That's the reason you, I was blinking. You do need to, when you do this analysis, you need to look at, at the entire life cycle of the technology. When you start producing... Exactly. Exa you need to look at uh, what you need to actually, for example, in the case of solar, okay, so you have to, to get to mine all the materials to actually yeah. produce. Once the panel is there, it does not produce anything, but in order to produce it. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. So you need to look at all the materials that are used to produce the panel, the the processes, the civil that is necessary mm -hmm. to actually set the site, etc. And then what is needed when you are dismantling the site to, to manage these weights, for example. So if you do this for all these major low carbon energy sources, is wind, uh, solar, and nuclear. And I'm saying this based on a recent report that was just published this last November by the European, uh, the, the United Nations European Commission for, uh, for Europe, uh, Economic Commission for Europe. They actually have nuclear being the lowest carbon emissions, uh, very close to wind. So wind and nuclear are about the lowest, and then solar closely behind. So. That's, that is clear. So despite us in the bigger Europe, the, the European Union, all Russia and the UK, mm -hmm. when we hear, despite us looking with certain suspicion sometimes at Americans, Americans are right when two thirds of them in this recent poll say that nuclear energy is green. It definitely is green. I mean, nuclear energy is just as sustainable as wind and solar. This is this is definitely very clear in my mind. So I think that some Americans have, have done their homework and they know. May I reveal a little secret that we'll be seeing more of you now, now that you've accepted our suggestion of becoming an International Awards yes, Committee member. very excited about that. Give us a couple of months to coordinate everything, mm -hmm. but we hope we're looking forward to seeing you during the next gathering of the committee. And I look forward to that too. Lovely. And thank you for the opportunity. Wow, this oh, is you. an excellent opportunity. Thanks so much. See you soon. Thank you.